Can you use a cheap, dusty, old office PC for a retro emulation? Well, yeah, but can it handle some higher-end stuff like Nintendo 64 or PlayStation or GameCube or PS2? Well, I know the answer, but if I told you right now, you wouldn't watch the video. <laughs> Come on now. Hello, I'm TechDweeb. Welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. This is you. You have a job, somewhere, that you, where you go and work. You wake up early every weekday, you get packed in a subway car full of a bunch of other sticky humans. You work all day, and your only joy is the peanut butter and jam sandwich that you brought for your lunch. After a hard day of work, it's back on the subway, and you get home to your bleak apartment with only an hour or two to yourself. But usually you're so tired and depressed that you just sit and stare at the wall until sleep takes you away from this empty existence. Is this really what life is about? Chasing your dreams but never reaching them? Working to own the things that end up owning you? What happened to those carefree days of yore? Sitting on the carpet of your parents' living room Saturday morning, eating corn pops, and playing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the Nintendo. Well, you can't have those days back. They're gone forever. But don't be sad. You don't have to jump off your balcony and end it all. Not yet, at least. Because you can recapture those nostalgic memories of retro games by playing them. On. Your. Computer. But, um, there might be a problem, huh? This is your PC. It's a dusty old office PC. It's never been upgraded, never been cleaned out. It's never even had a game installed. It was mostly used by someone's dead grandma to look at pictures of her grandkids on Facebook and to lose their inheritance playing poker online. Thanks for nothing, grandma! So, you want to know what sort of emulation you could do on an old PC like this, do ya? Do ya? Well, that's what I'm here for. This is going to be the first in a series of three videos meant to show you what kind of emulation you could do on the various types of uh, PCs. Each video will be looking at a different tier of PC and finding out what kind of performance you can expect. This video, our first tier, is going to see what kind of emulation we can expect on a very old, slow PC that smells like a dead grandma that was not built for gaming in any way. The second video in the series will be testing out emulation on a cheap budget gaming PC. And the third video will be seeing what sort of ultra high end emulation options we have on a super high end badass gaming PC. Those videos will be coming soon, so get subscribed so you don't miss them, and I'll link to them in the description below after I make them, so you could quickly get to them in the future. But for today's video, this is our PC. This thing right here. It's a Lenovo M81. I think this was released back in 2011. It has an old i5-2500 processor, 8 gigabytes of DDDDR3 RAM, no graphics card, and an old slow 500 gigabyte mechanical hard drive. You could buy a computer like this for like 50 bucks. This is not a gaming computer by any means, <laughs> not at all. But I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to, to hear that you could actually do quite a lot of emulation with an old PC like this, or whatever other low-end PC that you have with a similar performance. <laughs> Which is why emulation is awesome. It lets us play old console games on whatever devices we, we have, even dusty old grandma PCs and it gives us access to the greatest library of games known to man. Or something like that. And there are even a few surprising results that I came across that I'm excited to show you. But I don't want to spoil the surprises, so let's get into some testing. For emulation today, I'm using this Bodocera hard drive that I reviewed in this video. It comes pre-installed with all the ROMs, two terabytes of retro games, and its own custom Bodocera operating system. I'm just doing this because it's easy and I had this kicking around. You can also make your own Bodocera drive. My boy, Retro Game Corpse, he made a guide of how to do that. I'll link to his guide in the description below. Or you can just install a program like Retrobat either on the computer or on your own external hard drive. Of course, I made a tutorial of how to install Retrobat. It's probably the easiest way to get started with emulation if you're starting from scratch. There's a link to that video in the description below as well. It's a beautiful front end, as you can see, with all your systems displayed all nicely and the game box art and screenshots, but Retrobat is nearly identical to this. It's basically just Botocera run from Windows. You'll get about the same performance whether using Retrobat in Windows or Botocera, so just go with whichever is easy for you to get up and running quickly. 
So, without further dilly-dallying, as my mom would say, let's fire this thing up for some emulation, and let's get this out of the way right now. <laughs> All the old retro stuff is gonna run fine, without issue. Uh, basically any PC. All the 8-bit and 16-bit era stuff, you won't have any issues with any of that on a PC like this. Heck, even if you had like a worse PC than this, even older and even slower and even dustier PC, you'll still likely have no issues with these 2D emulation systems. So, if all you want to do is experience the good old days of early console gaming to play some Atari 2600 or Nintendo NES or Game Boy, all that stuff from the 8-bit era will work totally fine. And yeah, even the next level up from those systems, the 16-bit era, like Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, or even some more advanced stuff like Mame Arcade Games and Game Boy Advance, not, not a single issue with any of that stuff. So even before we continue, the fact that you can have all the old school NES and Super NES games, that might be enough for you, and that's freaking awesome. If that's the glory days of console gaming, then you could stop the video here. I, I hope you don't stop the video here, because <laughs> then you'll miss the next level of stuff, and also my, um, C clever and funny content. This video is bought, brought to you by b bananas. You can buy them at the grocery store. They're, they're freaking delicious. Everyone loves bananas, even your dead grandma. Look, even my cat loves bananas. Here, Hermione, eat this. C c come on, eat it. Eat it for the, the YouTube video. Eat it. Eat it! So with that uh, out of the way, whatever it was, let's move on to the first generation of truly 3D systems. Sega Saturn is a system that's pretty easy to emulate. Here I am playing Panzer Dragoon 2, and it's running great, totally fine. Not a hint of slowdown. All of these early 3D systems will run great, actually, at least at their native resolution. Which brings us to upscaling. Now, here on Sega Saturn, I personally do not like upscaling. I like this one as the authentic experience with the big chunky pixels in intact, which is good because this emulator doesn't allow upscaling anyways. But uh, for Nintendo 64, I do like upscaling. I think it's because of the way the Nintendo 64 does uh, texture filtering. It lends itself to upscaling more. So here on the Nintendo 64, I was able to play F-Zero upscale to 1080p. And that's the highest I could get without some significant performance issues. There is the occasional stutter, but it's barely noticeable. I think if you're looking to play some good old Nintendo 64, and you want to take advantage of upscaling to make the games look as sharp and modern as you can, this is about as far as you could push a low-end PC like this without getting into serious performance issues. PS1 was another system that I had a good experience up upscaling. This is ATV Mania upscaled to 1080p. Now, you probably won't be able to upscale every PlayStation game to 1080p. Some of the more demanding games might only be able to go up to like 720p or whatever. But PS1 is totally enjoyable, even if you can't get it upscaled to the max. Actually, this is another one of those older 3D systems that I personally prefer to play at the original resolution. I like those big chunky pixels on this system. I admit that I might be a weirdo though. I think lots of people like upscaling these sort of games. And you can here. I uh, uh, grab his dusty old PC. One more system that's about as demanding as Nintendo 64 and PlayStation is PlayStation Portable. The system can be upscaled on this hardware, no problem, but your mileage will depend on what game you're playing. Here I am playing Need for Speed Underground, and I was able to take it up to 4x resolution, which is basically 1080p. I was getting a few areas with a bit of stutters and slowdown, but they were few and far between. But if they bother you, and you could turn the resolution down or take advantage of frame skip. Also, if you're into tinkering with the settings, you might be able to find a combination of settings that will get you extra performance. That's beyond the scope of this video, but I did make a PSP settings guide for the Retroid Pocket 3 that explains how to find the best PPSSPP settings. Um, I'll link to that video below if you want to check it out. <laughs> And of course, the caveat is that not every game will give you the same levels of performance. God of War is one of the harder PSP games to emulate, and here I was only able to go up to 2x native resolution, and I was still getting some minor stutters in areas of slowdown. Yeah, you can go down to 1x resolution and have a perfect experience, but PSP really doesn't look great at 1x resolution, <laughs> not on a computer monitor or a TV. So I think sticking with 2x resolution at a minimum is probably for the best. <laughs> Your eyeball will thank you. <laughs> the 
Nintendo DS is a pretty good system to emulate. You'd think because of the touchscreen it would be weird, but the, the emulators are actually set up pretty good to be able to use the control stick as a cursor and to show one of the screens nice and big. Here we're upscaled to 2x resolution, but this is as far as I could go without getting into performance issues, which I felt was a, a bit weird because the DS is a pretty basic system. I figured we'd be able to go up higher than this. This might have been an issue with the emulators that they're using in this Bono Sarah hard drive <laughs> setup, so uh, your mileage may vary. I have a feeling if you were using RetroBand in Windows, you'd get better performance, but I'm just reporting on what I found. I couldn't get this running well beyond 2x resolution, no matter what I tried. Dreamcast ran really good at a native resolution, which is 640 by 480, so 480p. I couldn't get this to run smooth with any upscaling. It was almost fine at 720p, but there was some minor stuttering in the audio. And Crazy Taxi 2 isn't the hardest game to run, so I'm not okay with telling you that you're good for 720p. Dreamcast is only really demanding when you get into upscaling. If you're cool with the native resolution, and I personally am a-okay with playing Dreamcast games at 480p, then you'll be good to go on a system like this. Yeah. Yeah. And on to the system that everyone seems to want to be able to emulate these days, <laughs> GameCube. You know it's funny, when GameCube was released it was like the lame system. All the cool kids were into Xbox and Playstation 2, and GameCube was like the cheap underpowered console that didn't get the best games. And now, in retrospect, so to speak, <laughs> this is the best console of this generation. So many great GameCube games that have stood the test of time. All the first party Nintendo stuff, obviously, but lots of other GameCube exclusives that were actually really solid. Anyways, at the native resolution you'll be just fine to play most of the GameCube library. Don't think about upscaling though, because you'll get some pretty gross performance. For this generation of consoles, Dreamcast, GameCube, PS2, you're not going to be able to do upscaling on a week old PC like this. But you can play the games. They play just fine at their native resolution, for the most part. I say for the most part because there will be games that are less playable, and it's mostly because of the way that the Dolphin emulator handles shader caching. You'll get some stutters in some of the more demanding games, like Metroid Prime 2, so it's not perfect, but it's not even perfect on my higher end systems, to be honest. It's better no question, but it's, it's not perfect. It's just kind of the nature of GameCube emulation. Some games require more shader caching and won't run flawless no matter what you do. I'm going to guess that 95% of the GameCube library will play problem free and 5% will have performance issues. Nintendo Wii is another system that runs on the Dolphin emulator. It's much more demanding, and it, it came out the generation after the GameCube. It's sort of like a more powerful GameCube that ran at a higher resolution. It's at 480p, but it's fully widescreen. And here, performance will be very hit or miss. The more demanding stuff won't really be playable. However, there will be lots of games that are going to be playable. A lot less big open 3D games, all the 2D stuff, obviously. And even some of the big 3D games are actually not that demanding, so you can probably find quite a few games that'll work good. I'm going to venture a guess that about 50% of the Wii library will run okay. <laughs> And finally, the last system we'll be able to emulate here is PS2. I'll tell you right off the start that not everything is going to run flawlessly. This is Shadow of the Colossus, but as you can see, it's running like super slow. It feels terrible. It's not playable at all. But this is a very hard game to emulate, and there will be all, lots of PS2 games that do run just fine. And even most of the 3D games will run nearly problem free. I was playing Final Fantasy X and I didn't have any performance issues until one time in a battle there was some effect on the screen that slowed things down.
But other than that, it was totally fine. My guess is that 80% of the PlayStation 2 games will run fine, and 20% will give you performance issues, or won't be playable. There is such a huge library of PS2 games though, I'm, I'm sure you can find lots to play that'll run problem free. So, what can we do with a dusty old dead grandma PC? Well, I think I've shown that you can use pretty much any PC to play the early stuff, problem free. All the 2D stuff of the 8-bit era and the 16-bit era. But even on a weak, underpowered old PC like this, you can still get a ton of great 3D emulation. You have access to the whole library of Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, and PlayStation 1, and you can even upscale them to 720p or 1080p. And then they, they all run great. There shouldn't be any games from any of those systems that you can't play on a PC like this. And you also get all your PSP games upscaled and your Nintendo DS games. And you get access to most of the library of GameCube and Dreamcast and PlayStation 2 and a little bit of Nintendo Wii. Anything beyond that is not going to be possible, of course. You're not going to be running GameCube games upscaled to 1080p and you're not going to be running anything upscaled to 4K. You're not going to be running more advanced emulation like PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 or Wii U or 3DS or Nintendo Switch. But I'm frankly surprised that this dusty old PC could handle so much awesome emulation, even lots of the 3D stuff. But what about the next level of emulation? What sorts of emulation experiences can we get on a, a budget gaming PC or a big badass gaming PC? Well, you'll have to wait for the next videos in this series to find out. So get subscribed so you don't miss those. They'll be coming very soon. <laughs> sit, sit tight, my friends. And that brings us to the end. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about what kind of emulation you can do on various PC setups, or if you have any suggestions of great games that run on a low-end PC like this. Or if you have a dead grandma, feel free to give her a shout out in the comments below. I bet she was a real swell lady. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or don't if you didn't. Don't click the thumbs down button though. Come on now. You can keep that negative energy to yourself. This video is brought to you by the patrons of TechTweep. If you'd like to support the things that I do, uh, please check out the link in the description below. That's it from me. Until the next one, I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.